Okay, here we have another kit from Boldport. This one. Hey there, wonderful Boldport Club member. We won't be shipping in August because vacation. Sure, no problem. And what do we have here? An Altoids tin with a cover. And this is Light to Sound. Light to Sound. Uh, some surfing mount with what looks like a couple of battery connections or something like that. We've got some bits and bobs in here. Let's see what's all bitsy and bobsy about all of this. Okay, we've got a couple of switches. We got some feet. We got some preferred 16 volt electrolytic caps. We have a potentiometer. We have, yes, battery connections. We have some smaller electrolytic caps. We have a audio jack. And we have some passives and we have a couple active components here. I wonder oh, what that is. I wonder if and an LED and what looks like probably an IR LED. Um, in collaboration with Rare Waves LLC, rarewaves.net. Huh, okay. So, oh look, it comes drilled out for your audio jack. So I am wondering what we've got going here. I always like to figure, try and do some speculation in LM386 and hard to read this one without pulling it out of its container. And oh, come back here. I might just have to actually get the instructions out. Uh, TL072. Ooh, an op amp. And I wonder what this little job is. Diode probably. Maybe shocky diode of some sort. And then some capacitors. So things are like gold these days. Some various resistor values. Huh, not sure what those are. Some more resistors. Okay, so we got some resistors and some capacitors, an op amp, and a voltage regulator if I remember correctly. Okay, my memory is terrible. The uh, 386 is a the power amplifier and some more caps and switches. All right, so let us take a look online and see what light to sound is actually doing. Um, so it looks like we've got some surface mount soldering to do. And, oh, which side is, yeah, that's right. The negative side grabs and the positive side pushes. And so a nine volt battery inside of here, but I'm not sure what this thing is supposed to do. So let's take a boo online and figure that one out. So the 386 is a, is a power amplifier. And then, yeah, the uh, 73 is a low noise. Or oh, sorry, 72. Whoa. <laughs> sure, just wander through there. The, uh, the LMO 72 is a, um, a low noise op amp for uh, amplifying the sound so that we can hear it out of the speaker or out of our headphone jack or whatever. So yeah. Um, uh, it takes infrared and visible light. Um, it's just a simple, uh, straightforward circuit for amplifying. Well, first of all, converting visible and near infrared light that has fluctuations in the audible range into sound. So other things that you could do with this is you could probably put in a... You could probably... Sadie, 
really, if you're if you're going to be doing any soldering, you need to have an opposable thumb, I think, pretty much. Um, you could also probably put something like a um, a frequency shift or circuit in there, in between the LEDs, and then you could see, you know, translate non-audible frequencies into audible frequencies and listen to that. All kinds of things. I wonder. Okay, so the soldering is no scream and howl, that's for sure, but it does react to sound, or to light. Okay, so we've got it hooked up to the laptops, or the uh, computer speakers, and let's see what sort of sounds we get. Yeah, so um, when it's not overloading the, the circuit and going into clipping, it's picking up the fluorescent tube. Is that a 60 hertz hum? Probably. Okay, so that's a 2 milliseconds per division uh, scale. Let's put it on something that we can measure. So roughly 120 hertz. So fluorescent lamps double the frequency of the incoming voltage to get higher, yeah, I don't know. That's what it looks like, 120 odd hertz. Hmm. Yeah, 120 hertz is what fluorescent lights are supposed to be humming at. So, yeah, who knew? So now I've got this hooked up to a an LED that's hooked up to the a square wave generator, well actually a pulse generator, um, and we've got our duty cycle. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. Now you can't even see the LED lighting fluctuating at all, but there it is. So I think I was reading it was on Hackaday or it was somewhere um, where somebody was able to use the lights on a modem to determine what um, you know when the modem goes silent. But since uh, I think it was a uh, US Robotics 14.4 V32 best modem or maybe it was the Sportster, I forget. But anyways, they were able to, by using a device like this, just be able to determine what the bitstream was. Zero contact, just looking at the, the modem on the data line, um, even though it wasn't uh, illuminating at all, well, not visibly illuminating, it was still fluctuating, um, producing a small amount of light that was detectable with something like this, so that you could um, eavesdrop on modem conversations. So, I mean, yeah, no, I totally see that it is totally possible, 100%. <laughs> this is a fun little kit. So, yeah, if you wanted to sub out that diode with this diode, you could, and you could then use it to snoop on IR signals and figure out what IR sounds like coming from your various IR control devices, like uh, IR remotes on little toy drones, um, and then if you hook that, I, up to an oscilloscope, you could probably um, uh, sniff the, the bitstream that's coming from a drone remote control and reverse engineer whatever protocol the, the, uh, the drone our IR controller is sending out. Um, yeah, might try and do that. Sounds like fun. Okay, so the LM386 um, 
sorry, three, yeah, 386 N is here. And that's just like the same sort of um, chip you would find on these um, amplifier modules. Output capacitance, um, low pass filter. Uh, that's a blocking capacitor. This adjusts, how does it adjust? It, um, uh, pin seven. Pin seven's a bypass. Yeah, so that 0.5, 10, that's changing the, uh, the cutoff frequency there. And then we've got um, a 10 microfarad, yeah, just pretty much bog standard from the, from the data sheet. Um, yeah, filtering, filter cap for the uh, VC, uh, for the drive voltage, uh, that's connected to ground, and then, yeah, just the standard application of an LM386 gain of 200, which is controlled by that, uh, sorry, controlled by that there, I think. Uh, but let's just see. Yeah, pin one is the gain setting pin, and you adjust that by how much uh, capacitance is on there. So yeah, all of that there is just a standard um, amplifier, and then what we as an audio amp, and what we have here is called a transconductance amplifier, or a transimpedance amplifier, apparently. And it uses a couple of op amps and current modifying um, your non-inverting input on this op amp to convert a current flow into a voltage, a current fluctuation into a voltage fluctuation. Photodiodes um, will um, generate current based on how much light is impinging upon them. So this will have a fluctuating current here and that fluctuating current will be converted into a fluctuating voltage uh, in this um, amplifier. Broad strokes, that's how this circuit works. Fluctuating current here causes a fluctuating voltage here, which is amplified through here and then is sent out via an on headphone output. So yeah, fun circuit. Um, I have not gotten um, around to um, hooking, well actually, yeah, no, I haven't gotten around to hooking up a, um, a remote control to try and figure out um, what, uh, what key press sequences are being used, but you could certainly use this circuit to do just that, to reverse engineer um, an IR um, a signaling protocol and um, many other things, Jim, other than just listening to what your um, visible but perhaps not detectable to the human eye fluctuations in uh, visible light or IR light is um, in your environment. So anyways, yeah, uh, Bullport, thanks again for a wonderful kit. A lot of fun. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.